Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Anupama Chaudhary Devgat, your Physiology Faculty. This is the daily quiz series for DTPG 2025. And today I'll be discussing some topics from general physiology and muscle physiology. So let's take on the first question. It says, which of the following correctly matches the physiological control types with their examples. So there is negative feedback. There are two terms which are used here, negative feedback and feed forward. So what is negative feedback? Now, please remember that most control systems in the body function on negative feedback. Negative feedback is a stabilizing mechanism. And in negative fe feedback, there is a reversal of the initiating stimulus. These are the keywords as far as uh, negative feedback is concerned. A reversal of the initiating stimulus. If the blood pressure rises, the baroreceptors will reduce the sympathetic discharge to reverse, to bring down the blood pressure. What is a feed forward mechanism? A feed forward mechanism is anticipatory. Here, the changes are made in anticipation. Increase in heart rate before exercise. That becomes feed forward. Right? So let's have a look at uh, the options. Now, the first one says negative feedback. Insulin secretion in anticipation of food. The moment something happens in anticipation, that is a feed forward mechanism. So this and it says feed forward temperature regulation by sweating is in fact a negative feedback. So this is incorrect. Negative feedback, salivation on smelling food. Salivation in anticipation of food is also a feed forward mechanism. Uh, so this becomes incorrect. Blood pressure decrease after hemorrhage is a response. Right. So this is also not correct. Negative feedback, maintenance of blood glucose after a meal. Maintenance of blood glucose. Now, for instance, when the blood glucose rises, insulin secretion will increase to bring down the blood glucose. Here, the rise in the blood glucose is the initiating stimulus, which is getting reversed. So that is negative feedback, which is correct. Feed forward, increase in heart rate before exercise. This is also correct. C is your correct option. Let's also have a look at D, negative feedback, pupil constriction in response to light. It is a reflex response. Feed forward, shivering before drop in body temperature. This is correct. So this is partially correct. Therefore, my best answer here is C. Let's have a look at the negative, uh, the next question. A five-year-old boy presents with difficulty in walking in frequent falls. He uses his hands to climb his thighs when rising from the floor. This is known as the Gover's sign. He also has a pseudohypertrophy of his calves. His serum creatinine kinase, creatine kinase levels are elevated. What is the possible underlying mutation? Now, this is a typical case of Duchenne's muscular dystrophy where there is absence of functional dystrophin. If there's a mutation of the rhinodine receptor, it causes a malignant hyperthermia. If there is a mutation of the sarcoglycan, it causes what is known as the limb girdle dystrophy. This is also characterized by muscle weakness, but this is a milder form of the disease. So just let's have a look at the dystroglycan sarcoglycan complex. This is the sarcolemma. Remember, muscle fiber is equal to the muscle cell. So the cell membrane of the muscle fiber is known as sarcolemma. Here is actin, the two strands of actin in a double helix. Now connecting the actin to the cell membrane, to a protein in the cell membrane. This is a rod-like protein, which is called dystrophin. Dystrophin links actin with beta 
dystroglycan. Beta dystroglycan is associated with alpha dystroglycan, which in turn is associated with a protein in the extracellular matrix, which is called laminin. Another protein, sarcolemal protein, which is called syntropin. It is a globular protein. One more, which is called sarcospan. And then there are uh, four more proteins, which is alpha, beta, gamma, delta sarcoglycan. So these are your sarcolemal proteins, five of them, which are these dystrophin, syntropin, sarcospan, dystroglycan and sarcoglycan. Absence of dystrophine, Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. Remember, in Duchenne's dystrophin is deficient. Becker's muscular dystrophy, dystrophin is present but reduced. Remember, Becker's is better. Limb girdle dystrophy is a mutation of sarcoglycan. Let's have a look at the next question. It says, extracellular concentration of chloride is 100 and intracellular is 10 millimoles per litre. So cell membrane is freely permeable to chloride. If it is freely permeable to chloride, that means chloride will come from outside to inside. And when it comes from outside to inside, since this is an anion, then inside will gain a negative charge. Inside will become negative with respect to outside. So inside will develop a negative potential. The equilibrium potential for chloride will therefore be a negative potential. But how much is the magnitude? To calculate that, you have the Nernst equation, which says the equilibrium potential in millivolts is equal to 2.3 RT upon Fz log of higher concentration by lower concentration. We have been given 2.3 RT upon F is 60. Valency, Z is valency. Valency for chloride is 1, C1 is higher concentration, 100, C2 is lower concentration, 10. So what is log of 10? 1. So this is a 60 millivolt and I've just explained it to you that this will be a minus, it will be a negative potential inside. Once again, why is it a negative potential inside? Because chloride is a negatively charged ion which enters from outside to inside, from higher to lower concentration. Since it is negatively charged, it will create a negative potential inside with respect to outside. So this equilibrium potential will be a negative potential magnitude calculated by the Nernst equation. and It gives us the answer minus 60 millivolts. Let's look at the next one. Which of the following correctly describes the sequence of events for a skeletal muscle? In a muscle, you will always have electrical activity first, followed by contraction, followed by the mechanical activity. Electrical followed by mechanical. What is electrical? Action potential. Followed by mechanical. What is mechanical? Contraction. So first you have a action potential, excitation, then an excitation, contraction, coupling, and then a contraction. So in this case, since we are also including a nerve action potential, so first there will be an action potential in the nerve, then the impulse is transmitted across the neuromuscular junction to the muscle fiber, muscle fiber is excited, there is an action potential which is generated, after this is an excitation contraction coupling and then a contraction. So the sequence will be nerve action potential followed by muscle action potential followed by contraction. So my answer here is D. All of the following properties of the ventricular muscle are true except follows the length tension relationship which is true. Frank Starling's law. 
more the initial length, more the tension generated up to a physiological limit. This is true. Follows all or none law, that is also true. The heart, the ventricle muscle or the ventricle follows all or none law. Either the complete ventricle will contract or there will be no contraction. So this is also true. Can be tetanized. This is false. Cardiac muscle cannot be tetanized. Why it cannot be tetanized? Because it has a long refractory period. So this is true. Answer here becomes can be tetanized. It cannot be tetanized. Why can it not be tetanized? Because it has a long refractory period. If you remember the, the plateau potential, because of the plateau phase, the total duration of action potential and the duration of refractory period has increased. Therefore, the cardiac muscle cannot be tetanized, which makes a lot of sense. Because in the heart, I want systole, diastole, systole, diastole. If heart goes into a sustained systole, sustained contraction, kahani khatam, isn't it? So heart muscle cannot be tetanized. A brief look at what are the properties of cardiac muscle excitability. It can be excited. It can generate its own action potential, autorhythmicity. It has the property of contractility, conductivity. There are special modified cells which are called the con which form the conducting system of the heart. It is a mechanical and a functional sensation, which is true. It is a functional sensation because of the presence of gap junctions. It is a mechanical sensation because of the presence of intercalated discs. So it's both a mechanical and a functional sensitium. All or none law, either the complete ventricle will contract or none at all. So this is, it has a prolonged refractory period because of the presence of the plateau. Source of calcium is mainly the ECF. Frank Starling's law is applicable to the heart, more the initial length, more is the tension generated, but up to a physiological limit beyond which further increase initial, initial length decreases the tension generated. And what can increase the initial length of the ventricular muscle fibers? More the filling, more the filling during diastole, more the end diastolic volume, more the initial length, more will be the tension generated. What is preload? Preload is the end diastolic volume, which increases the initial length. What is afterload? Afterload for the heart is the total peripheral resistance, the resistance against which the heart has to contract. And cardiac muscle does not fatigue. So these are important properties of cardiac muscle.